Back in 60 seconds after this word for something new from the new Hazlet Theater in Pittsburgh. The Dragon of Polish Hill, a puppet performance created by Dave English and Will Schutz, will be presented online by the new Hazlet Theater on Thursday, September 24th and Friday, September 25th. Back into the music, we'll play some waltzes up next. Well, hello, Mr. Onion. Mr. Onion, you with me today? Are the lights on today, Stanley? Okay, then. How did you get out here in the hallway, Mr. Onion? Hmm, hold on, honey, I'll be right back. Hey, hey, I need one of y'all to come back and check on Mr. Onion out here. I'm speaking to y'all. Who's supposed to be on this floor? Mr. Onion is sitting out here all by himself. I was, I, I was right here just a moment ago. Now I'm, oh, oh yes, I remember, I remember. Hey, Stanley, husband, don't come home drunk today. I know it's not fair, but I'm still alive. You're still alive, so let's live while we still have little time. Life doesn't have to stink. Sweetheart, you're, you're telling a man who has an onion for a head, life doesn't have to stink. Okay, okay. All right, Tonya, my love. I won't go to the bar today. Instead, I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll go down to Javorski's. I'll walk down to Mikey's right now. I'll buy some rabbit. Rabbit. You love rabbit? I love rabbit for a fine supper with you, sweetie, tonight. Rabbit? Oh, you know I can't eat or even cook anymore. But I'll be happy to watch you eat rabbit. 
I rest all day, so I have strength. Yes. Yes, rest up. I will see you tonight, Sonia. I'm, I'm not mad at you. I, lo I love you. Long, long time ago, someone I know had a little red canoe in it room for only two. Love found its start then in my heart and like a flower grew. Take a look at this. All right, take a look at this. What? is wrong with this. That's right, there's no fat on it, you know? But, another question, what is right about this? Same answer, there's no fat on it. And that's because that's the way the lady orders it. You're supposed to leave fat on a nice piece of meat like this. This lady's been a pain in my ass for years, all right? So you did right and you did wrong, I tell her, look, every time, ma'am, please don't cut all the fat off your meat. It won't have any flavor. It'll be dry. It won't, it, it won't be nice and, and succulent. It's one of those things, what are you gonna do? You know, it's, hey, Stanley. Stanley on you, my old pal. My man, what could I do for you? Stanley, you all right? Stanley, you don't look too good. Stanley? Willie James, nice to meet ya. I'm Margaret Schmegman, City Paper. Thanks for meeting me. This place is so cool. No problem, cool, cool, yeah, it's a good place. We had planned to run your interview in our weekly featured artist series, but just before I left to meet you here, our editor pulled me aside and told me he'd like to run you as our cover story. Oh yeah? Cool. Yeah, it's exciting. Okay, so, Willie James, you are building quite a following around the city. It seems like you've been performing and creating everywhere recently. People know you by your rabbit ears, your punk rock style, and your wild man antics. You perform on the street. You sell work in galleries and museums. You turn up on stage with rock bands, cameos and hot movies. So, how do you classify your artwork? See, I don't like to push my work into a category because I believe what I'm doing isn't easy to define, you know? like. You ask me how I classify my work, well, I don't even believe in classifications because there's nothing in science to support that. Genres and themes and, you know, what kind of materials am I using, like, I don't even know yet. Drinking straws, I don't know, cheesecake, swords, who knows? Like, if I already knew what I was doing, why would I bother doing it? Sure, sure, I can respect that. So what are you working on now? Any new projects? Well, actually, I am just about to show my new video for an old song I've adapted on this screen behind us. That's kind of why I asked you to meet me here. Oh, what? You're gonna play it here, right now? Yeah, the owner Chris, he's real cool. Okay, here he is. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Chaos, owner of Chaos Coffee. Thanks for being here. Uh, hey, sorry to interrupt anything, but this should be a nice surprise. I'd like to introduce our guest artist, or what are you technically, a filmmaker? Anyway, you've all heard of Willie James. We're stoked to have him here. Chaos Coffee is proud to support local artists. <coughs> okay, uh, here it is, a new music video for a song called Beautiful Ohio by Willie James. <laughs> Jumps, swing a little bit. I don't know, I think it'd be cool. Check, check, check. Drifting with the current down a moonlit stream. While up by the heavens of the glory queen. And the stars on high. 
Thanks everyone, I'm Willie James. That's my version of a really old song. I'll be showing my new video here again tomorrow. I have a show coming up this weekend at a, hey. Oh, hey, watch yourself there, uh. Hey, who is this? Sir, sir, excuse me. You supposed to be cute, bunny rabbit? Ah, we'll put you in the stew. <laughs> what? You heard me, sissy. Wait, where the hell is Mikey? Uh, what? Sorry, man. I don't know what you mean. You don't know what I mean? The hell do you know? <laughs> you ought to be sorry. Look at you. Where the hell's Mikey? Sir, Mikey! Sir, sir, calm down. Mikey! Sir, you need to chill out. I'm here, I'm here to talk to Mikey and order some meats to take up to the house for, uh, for, uh, for supper and I... Meat? It's just that I, uh... Dude, this place is all vegetarian. The hell are you, rabbit, rabbit, rabbit son of a bitch? I, I don't know who you are. I don't like you trying to be cute. I'm, um, I need... I was right here a minute ago. You know that? But now I'm, uh, I'm... I need to talk to the colored nurse. Oh... M. G. Did he just say colored nurse? Okay, sir. I'm sorry. I don't know if you are intoxicated or what's going on, but I'm gonna have to ask you to step away from our table, please. We're in the middle of an interview here and showing a video. We don't know these people you're asking us about. We don't have any money for you, and we don't say people are colored. Oh, good for you, dipstick. Well, I need to find a colored nurse anyway, because I need to, well... I need to take a leak. Oh no. Oh. Whoa, what the hell, man? You're peeing on me. Back the hell up, old man. Oh my, oh my God, I'm sorry. Oh. I, I didn't, I didn't. Is this where the bus will pick me up? Holy crap, what is wrong with you? You didn't have to knock him down. I didn't, nothing. I mean, I didn't mean to. He pissed all over the floor. I hardly touched him. Oh, Jesus, this is so bad. Hey, that bunny rabbit guy just knocked down this old man. That's terrible. This is not cool, man. It's that rabbit here. Oh. That's elder abuse. Call the cops. Yeah, call the police. That's Willie James. Ginger fire! I've been waiting for you to offend me. Your poetry sucks. No, I didn't mean to. He pissed on me and I accidentally... And I'm not technically a poet. Obviously, I didn't mean to, but yeah, yeah, I am poetic in a way, I guess. Willie James is crap. Screw you, buddy ears! You like knocking down old people, you hipster? Prick wise! Toxic male idiot! Go pound salt up your ass, buddy Billy, whoever you are. I'm extremely sensitive! Trigger! Oh, come on, man. I, I was, I didn't mean to do that. This is a misunderstanding. This is so not cool. Margaret, can you believe this is happening? Oh, I'm getting it all. This is going to be an amazing cover story. I'm so excited. Judge Chicky Chicolino, Pittsburgh Circuit Court for Special Crimes Jerk Unit. Please rise. I said, rise, please rise, everyone. Okay, okay, okay. You may all be seated. So, uh, who is the guy here? Right? It's always a guy that's uh, doing something dumb, and uh, where's my papers? Thanks. Let me read, let me read this. Oh, we got us uh, some kind of real idiot here today. Is that artist guy who pushed down the old man. Well, we all read about it in the papers. Willie James, are you here? Uh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. Stand sorry. up when you're talking to me. Now sit back down. I, 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 I read your character references and... Do you think I give a bag of beans about your cultural contributions? You, you run with quite a fancy bunch, huh? Too bad I don't care what art collectors. 
museum curator, college deans, for that matter, deans of art at least. Well, art affects each of us differently. I, I respect your... Then some guy from Hollywood, you ha! Sends me an email about you, you was in his movie. I don't know. That doesn't impress me, huh? That could have been a porno for all I know, and I ain't seen no movie. Did you read the bit from the Smithsonian, though? It, it says Listen, I... Listen, uh... you idiot! You're a flat-footed nincompoop, a chowder-headed ninny, a pickle-finger nitwit. That's what we call you where I'm from. And do you know where I'm from, Willie James? Uh, no, sir. Your Honor. Near here? I'm a tough guy from tough guy town in a tough guy city. I was raised on a tough titty. Raised tough on tough streets by a tough old man who worked in a tough trade. And I went to tough guy school and got a tough guy degree. I had to be tough to make it out of a real tough situation. What do you think of that, Mr. James? Oh, I I'm honestly not sure, Your Honor. If I can explain what happened that do day... Do my eyes look right to you, Mr. James? Um, yes, Your Honor? Do <laughs> you think I care about any of that what happened that day stuff? This is, this is, this is public opinion, Buster Brown. You're a chump, a screw-up, and a screw a screwball, and you'll be screwed in real tight when we're done with you, you bozo. You strut around like a cock of the rock. Acting a fool at your fancy party. Ha! Well, the fun is over, fancy boy. Um, is, is, is this the trial? Or is there, like, somebody else I, I could talk to? Your Honor? Oh, I got somebody else you can speak to, liver lips. In fact, I got a whole building full of old, lonely old pudding slippers you can talk to. You can also help take out the trash and mud pans and wipe their asses and give them their magazines and spoon their pudding and uh, hold their little rat dogs. I'm sentencing you to 90 days of community service at St. Ursula's Assisted Living Facility in Polish Hill. I'm so sorry to hear that, ma'am. Maybe Raymond should clean up his own mess. Raymond? Oh, Raymond. Why, Raymond has been dead for years. Did you know my Raymond? Oh, Raymond! Oh, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. I'm sure Raymond was a great man. Raymond? Raymond was a very sensual and lustful man. He liked to watch me get it on with other men. We were swingers and open lovers. Some people say we were perverts, but I think we were just having more fun. <laughs> See now, that's exactly why we don't talk about Raymond here. Raymond had big, strong hands.
hands and curly hair. I used to tie him to the bedpost. Oh, I know you did, baby. Okay, now, hey, hey, Francine. You know, your TV program is about to come on, girl. You better go get one of them comfortable chairs. Raymond, is that too tight? I bet it's... Are you okay? I don't... I, I don't want you to chafe anymore. You all dressed up like a bunny rabbit, and it ain't even Easter. Are you someone's weird grandson, or are you here to steal pills? Or both? Uh, neither. Good morning. I'm looking for Nurse Jackson. Well, you found me, sir. What can I do for you? Good morning, Nurse Jackson. I'm Willie James. I, uh... Oh, Willie James! Right off the front pages. My little community service helper. Right on time. Okay, okay, Willie, look at you. Damn. I wouldn't take you as a type to be pushing down old people. But okay, I see you. Oh, uh, no, I actually, I, I didn't push him. The whole thing is so blown out of proportion, you know, because everyone is so freaking reactionary and sensitive these days, you know. Mm, oh yeah, y'all having a hard time these days, huh? Y'all white boys are under attack, huh? Well, n no, I didn't say that. I, I just mean like... I know. People finally calling you out on your shit and it's freaking you out, right? A lot of shit that used to be funny, real funny, ain't funny no more. Remember how funny Kevin Spacey used to be? <laughs> but check it out. I'm gonna give you a nice, easy first day here because I can already tell I like you. You do? Uh, why's that? Because you did what I've always wanted to do myself. You threw that miserable, oh, bastard, Stanley onion right on the ground. And because you walk around with those dope bunny ears. Those are nice. I like weird stuff. Oh, geez, that's pretty intense. Like I said, I didn't push him. But since you brought it up, he was being kind of a dick that day. He said something about... Now, these are his words. Uh, colored nurse to me, so... He was at that weird time me? Oh, that makes me mad. See, that's what he does. I hope you bitch slap him too. Man, I'm sure he was being his charming self, out on his little adventure, a blast from the past, with all his racist noise and bossing people around and singing songs nobody heard in 50 years. Yeah, I thought he was like a drunk or a vagrant, you know, like he just walked up to me and picked a fight. I know. Believe me, I know. This man has been here and old and mean as hell since the day I started 18 years ago. Onion-headed bastard. Obviously, that's no excuse, and I feel terrible that the old guy got hurt. Well, he's not any worse for wear. That old onion man is just too mean to die. Yeah, about that. His, um, onionness? What is that? Like a medical condition? Is that something that happens to old people? No. Hell no. Not to normal people. He's just an onion man. An onion man? Sorry, I don't know what you mean. I mean, he's a man. Made from an onion. He's, a, he's an onion man. Come on. I know. I mean, you're thinking that is impossible and I'm crazy, right? Well, it is impossible. And maybe I am a little crazy, but I swear on my mother's rabbit fur coat, that man is an onion. I've been taking care of him for almost 20 years. He hardly eats or drinks nothing. You can't take his blood, you just get onion juice. He hasn't pooped the whole time I've been here, every now and again, you know. Then his top layer of skin dries up and flakes off just like an onion. He grows like an onion. But, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. He's, he's just an onion man? Like, and, and nobody has looked into that? Like, where does he come from? He can't just be made from onions. <laughs> Pittsburgh is endlessly weird. You just, you're just messing with me, right? Okay, okay, you don't believe me. Honestly, I didn't believe them when they told me back in the day. Well, you will learn all about his old onion ass firsthand. Then we'll talk. Wait, what do you mean? I mean, I'm going to train you how to look after him. Then I'm going to leave you in there with them. So I don't got to deal with him. I'll be alone with him? Is that even legal? I don't know and I don't care. If you can knock the man down on the ground like that, the least you can do is take some care and take some time to get to know him, understand why he deserved it. And I'll be here to make sure you don't do nothing too stupid. You should be thanking me because it's an easy job till something stirs him up. So don't stir him up, okay? Of course, of course, okay. Yes, 
Don't stir him up. Okay. Right. Okay. Usually he just sits and stares in the space all day. That's what he's been up to for months. In fact, we thought he had just gone totally nonverbal until he surprised us with his recent jailbreak. Sneaky old bastard. He got someone fired. That white girl, Maureen, yeah. Maureen or Mara, one of them new girls. That's a shame too. She was crying, mm. but he don't care. Let's go see his onion ass now over here in the den. He's always sitting over there. Unless he goes to the coffee shop. Shut up, Willie James. Come on, man. Good morning, Mr. Onion. Are you with me today? Are the lights on today, Stanley? See, nothing. Mr. Onion, Stanley. Yep, checked out again. Makes you wonder what he's thinking, right? No, it don't. I don't want to know what this old man is thinking about. I don't want that in my mind. Lord, no, you'll see, okay? So you have 90 days with this man. I'm about to show you what you need to do, okay? Okay. Now, you need to know all of this. And there is a lot to know. A whole lot of important details about how to care for Mr. Onion, okay? Okay. All right, it's all coming to you at once, okay? And it's a lot. If you can't remember everything now, that's okay. That's all right. Okay. Just don't ask me to explain any of this to you ever again. Or I might have to smack you in the mouth, all right? Um. <laughs> oh, man, I'm just cutting up, Willie James. <laughs> you gonna let me smack you in the mouth? <laughs> And look at your face. All right, all right. You all right, Willie James. Now, for real, pay attention. Mr. Onion, here we are. Here I am. Hey, is it cliche for me to have a dialogue with you right now? You know, like an apology to the victim while he lay dying. Big moment, pour your heart out crap. Like Lion King, Darth Vader, Awakenings. I don't know, Tuesdays with Maury, I guess. Jeez, maybe Weekend at Bernie's. Could be a good meme. I said it could be a good meme. Stanley Onion. You don't know what a meme is. You're like 115 years old. How about a glass of water? Snack? Fox News? Okay, so what else do we do to pass the time then? Okay, man. Just let me know if you need anything. Should have brought my computer so I can edit while I'm... Yeah, that's a good idea. This can work. Okay, okay, old onion buddy. You stay nice and relaxed for 89 more days and I'll be able to get some serious work done while you veg out.
Oh, oops. Oh. Oh. Stars on high, twinkle in the sky. Hey, a rabbit! So what the hell is going on? Zell and I flung divine. Dream of a pair of eyes and look. Mr. Hawkman, that's a lot of stuff. Let's have a dance now. Oh my God, where did this come from? I gotta calm down with a hot ticket like you in the room. Come on, sugar, let your hair down. Turn that music off! Sorry, sorry, my headphones came unplugged. He just came to life. He sure did come to life, but I'm afraid it might kill him. Turn that off! Sorry, I wasn't trying to kill him, though it seems like you wouldn't mind that yeah, anyway. Yeah, shut up, Willie uh, Jane! Ah, bullshit, she loves me! Stanley, <laughs> you old bastard, I can't believe you! I thought you were gone for good this time. Now you're dancing? This ain't the old days, Gene Kelly. You know you got to be careful with them onion hips. <laughs> oh, I'm a champion polka dancer. The best in Polish hill. Nah, uh, you were a champion. Was he really? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Hey, you know. Ah. Uh, yeah. I know. Uh, I know, all right. What do you know? I know, Mold. I know you're a pain in the dupe, huh? I remember now. I'm old. Old as hell. You so old, there was a newspaper article about you being old. You might be the oldest man alive, Mr. Onion. You're famous. What do you think about that? Is that supposed to be good news? I don't know. I guess, well, I've, so many years, I have one regret. What's that? I never got a chance to get it on with a black prod. Oh, my God. <laughs> But it ain't too late. No, please. Too late and too damn bad, Onion Man. You can't just keep it moving with all that bullshit. I can't even handle you. You come back to life after all this time and give me this nonsense? Look, this is Willie James right here. He's keeping you company for a while. He's going to make sure you cool. We're going to have a nurse check you out, and then we'll get you a special meal up here as a welcome home present for you. You mean-ass, racist, old, onion-headed bastard. And I missed you. We'll be together yet. <laughs> I think I've seen this guy before. You know that? I, I remember you. Oh, sir, I'm genuinely sorry. I also remember Connie Francis. Wait, sorry, who? Connie Francis, I said. That, that Connie Francis was a peach, wasn't she? Oh, she was a real peach out there. Beautiful Italian girl. She did that song real good. Hey, play it again. Um, okay. Oh, God bless her. It's a shame all the tragedy that happened to her. It was, uh, I forget, somebody I, uh... Hey, hey there. Twinkle in the sky. Where'd she go? She just went to the nurse's station, I think. Uh, she has work to do. I didn't realize you two were friends. Oh, yeah, I love that, Brad. Now, who are you? I'm, uh, uh, I'm Willie James. Why are you here? Well, sir, I, uh, I'm not sure if you remember it, but I accidentally knocked you down, and I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. I don't mind. I, I don't remember nothing. A skinny kid like you couldn't hurt me anyway. Hey, do you have, do you have bunny ears? Yes, I have rabbit ears. Why would you do that? Why did I knock you down? No, why are you wearing bunny ears? I don't know. I really don't know. You're just trying to be cute. Trying to be cute? Uh, I, I don't know what that means. Oh, I think you do. I think you're trying to be cute. Yeah, okay, maybe I'm trying to be cute. Whatever. So, why do you have an onion head? I was born this way, jerk. I've been an onion ever since my parents planted me in the garden. What? Did you say your parents 
buried you in their garden? Come on, man, seriously? Seriously, how did you become an onion? I told you already. I was born an onion. They planted me. They're not burying me, you creep. Are you listening to me? But, but wait, wait. how does that happen? Born an onion. Planted? You want to know why I'm an onion? Then shut up and I'll tell you the story. Jeez, okay, okay. I'd love to hear this. The floor is all yours, Stanley. I was born in a village that no longer exists. In a country that no longer exists. On a mountain that probably still exists. My parents were a young farm couple, simple peasants. They didn't want much, but what they did want, they could not have children. My mother cried and cried. My father prayed and prayed. Neither one helped. Finally, in desperation, they went to the Baba who lived at the edge of the village and asked for help. The old woman gave my childless parents a magic onion bulb and told them to plant it in the garden outside their bedroom window on the night of the next full moon and make love with the curtains open and the light of the moonbeams. Well, wait, so they, they kept the curtains open so the moonlight could make it into the bedroom? No, so the old lady could watch. Of course they left the curtains open so the moonlight could get in, you dummy, it's how magic works. Anyway, it worked. When they woke up the next day, I was sprouting out of our garden. They said by mid-morning I broke away from my roots, dropped my flower, and started crawling around. We became a happy family. Being an onion boy, it was nothing. I knew no difference. Stanley, that's a pretty wild story, man. That's kind of beautiful. So then what? How did your family end up in America, in Pittsburgh? My family didn't make it. Only I would go to America. But what about your parents? Died. They died and our whole village died, except me. It was the influenza epidemic, Spanish flu. It moved through our mountains, killing off the entire village. I was only five or six when it reached our village. First my father, then my mother, then the neighbors died, then their neighbors died, and some nuns came to get me. I remember that day being scared. I could tell they didn't like me, but they still helped me. Then the nuns, they died too. I wandered empty streets, looked into empty houses, and called out into an empty night. One morning, I decided to Climb up the roof of the church. The jewel of this once growing village was the gold crucifix atop the church's highest spire. I don't know why I wanted that thing. The church had no interest in me and I had no respect for it. I was born from a different book. There were no onion boys in their stories. I thought the cross was tiny from the ground that was small enough to make me fit in my pocket. But when I got up there, I climbed and climbed. It was bigger than me, the thing. Still... I unbolted it and shimmied it back to earth. Something about getting back to ground with that heavy gold cross made me feel triumphant. I, don't know. I propped it up, and I climbed under it and passed out, exhausted. Man, that's terrible. I'm sorry about your parents. What a story, though. So then how did you get to Pittsburgh? Stop interrupting me. I'll, I'll tell you. Okay, okay. I so was just telling you. Jeez, you're mean. Please continue. You're a patient, smart-ass kid. <clears throat> so I, I don't know how long I sat under the cross, but I hear footsteps. I look up, and there's the Baba, the old lady who gave to my parents the onion bulb that would become me. She's the one who told me about where I came from, and then she said, Listen to me, young, young onion, onion boy. boy. This, this place, place dies now. You live on, young onion boy. You must go to America. There's a place where there are some people from this village living now. They will take care of you. That old woman bundled me up in a coat, loaded me onto a cart drawn by an ass, along with the church's money box, and the gold cross from atop the church. She walked me down to the road that led to the city, and once I got to the ocean, I sold everything but the cross and i traveled first class all the way to america on a steamship dragging that big old cross wrapped like a package all the way to new york city 
Holy cow, Stanley. So, so when you got to New York, I mean, how did you do it? Did you even speak English? No, no, just, just Polish. There were some Polish-speaking nuns or ladies in New York who helped me. They gave me soup and asked me why I was an onion, and they put me on the train to Pittsburgh. Oh, Stanley, it's an amazing story. Yeah, fascinating, huh? Well, look at you two in here yucking it up. That ain't bad. Not bad at all. Okay, Willie James, that's it for today. You may excuse yourself. Good work today. Actually, can I stay, uh, get, get a few more hours? Really? Okay. Take a few more minutes then, but not too long. He's gonna get worn out with all that jawing. Yeah, yeah, there are better ways to get worn out, let me tell you. <laughs> Lord, this shift needs to end. Not too many people come back like this, Stanley. Must be the onion in you. <sighs> Where does she go? Just back to the nurse's station. Oh. Well, who, who the hell are you? I'm Willie James. I'm the guy who, uh... We were just talking about how you got to Pittsburgh when you were a little kid. You were going to tell me about getting on the train in New York. It's a great story. Oh, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, so... What are you, what are you doing here? Well, sir, I got in a bit of trouble, and I'm here doing a community service. What? Criminal? The hell did, what the hell did you do, you weird, weirdo? You got the bunny ears on your head. Are you a pervert? No, sir. I'm an artist. Ah, bullshit. What do you want? I don't really want anything other than... I'd really like to hear the rest of your story about how you got to Pittsburgh. On the train from New York, you had the cross, the old ladies helped you get a train to Pittsburgh. Yeah, I know. Well, who's telling the story, you or me? No, no, it's all yours, and you don't need to tell me to... Sh Shut up, and I'll tell you what happened. Um... What was I telling you? Uh, your story about how you got to Pittsburgh on the train from New York. When you were a boy, you had the cross. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, on the toot toot on the train. <laughs> they put that cross on the train with me. and <laughs> took me just about the rest of my money to get to Pittsburgh with it. And uh, The whole way there, I sat in a train car with someone who I think was the devil. He was an old Slav with a big bushy beard, a fisherman's hat, a pipe, and we rode all the way together, him puffing smoke on me. It was, it was him who put the dragon in my mind. What? Dragon? What do you mean he put a dragon in your mind? Seriously, I love this story. What do you mean? Smoke Polski Gori, the dragon of Polish Hill. <laughs> it's a secret, you know. Nobody knows it was me. Nobody knows what was you. The dragon of Polish Hill. I never told no one it was me. It doesn't matter, though. It's just so long ago. It all started when I was a kid on that train. That old Slav spoke some Polish to me, but he had that big beard and a bad accent and no teeth, so I only understood the bits and pieces. He warned me that there was a great smog over Pittsburgh, and to my ear, he was saying smok, which means dragon in Polish. And I knew of dragons in stories. My father had told me about Krakow, but I didn't think they were real, or uh, they would certainly not be in Pittsburgh, but this old man assured me. In Pittsburgh is a great smog. It's make black clouds so thick you no see the sun. Day will look as night. All the time the fires glow. Working men walk the hills black with the soot from their fires. Businessmen change their colors midday. The salt and smog burn their eyes. It swirl around the hills gray and thick in black sky. I thought to myself, after all this, I survive a plague. I come to Pittsburgh in America on a boat, on a train. I climbed the church. I met a witch. I met an old man. And now, to Pittsburgh, where I will be eaten by a dragon? <laughs> and why would that old woman send me here if there is a smoke Polsky Gori? <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh, man. So, okay, so then what happened once you got here? Did you believe you were going to see a dragon? 
Hell yes, I was scared as could be. I was really looking for a dragon in the sky. (laughs) (laughs) I was glad to get the hell away from that old Slav who put that in my head. I think he was the devil. I was just a baby at the time. What happened when you got to Pittsburgh? First steps in Pittsburgh and I'm all out of money. I don't speak English. Six years old onion head and pulling a beat up cross with me. I stood there crying for a while. Some Italian felt bad for me and gave me an apple, which I thought was swell. Eventually, someone took me to Polish Hill. Pulling that cross all the way with me from Poland ended up being a good idea because it made me a big hit with the church ladies immediately. They had recently lost one of the crosses from the top to St. Mary's Church in the lightning strike, and the one I brought with me was a perfect match. A miracle. Man, I'm so glad you came back to life. <laughs> no shit. Me too. It's good memories, good memories. Hey, what was that bit you said about nobody knew you were the dragon, or you had the dragon in your head? You said you never told anyone about it. What were you talking about? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait now. Who, who are you again? All right, you two, Mutt and Jeff in here. I'm sorry to break up the band, boys, but Willie James, you got to go, boy. Mr. Onion, your old ass needs to take these pills and go to bed. I need to go home and drink me a natural ice, maybe smoke a little spliff. I have to say, I like seeing you two enjoying each other's company, you know? Seriously, there is so much messed up shit going on in this world. It's... It's just nice to see people acting nice. Especially some weird as hell dudes like you two, who are usually, you know, a pain in the ass. So, good work today, y'all. Well, today was really cool. Uh, Stanley, Mr. Onion, I look forward to tomorrow. I hope you'll tell me more about your life. I want to hear about the Dragon of Polish Hill. Huh, I never heard of that one. And I've heard a lot of his bullshit. Okay, say goodbye to your friend, Mr. Onion. Sure, goodbye. Who the hell was that? Stretch your legs, stretch your legs, stretch your legs and walk around. Move your feet all over the ground. We're doing the intermission poker. Meet somebody. Meet some friends, share a laugh, an early critique of the show's first half. There's still another bunch of puppets to go. We're only doing the intermission poker. Have a pee. Shake your wang, flush the clam, drop a deuce and walk around. If you got the go, then you know you should go during the intermission poker. Call somebody Call your ma Call your son Pick up the phone and dial 911 Interrupt their evening while you're down at the show Just waiting on the intermission poker Have a drink Have a drink A hand of nachos Grab a beer and sit back down You ain't got that much time left now We're doing the intermission poker Get naked Ah, no, don't get me naked That's too bold In fact, put some more clothes on So you don't get cold This ain't really that kind of a show We're just doing the intermission poker
Dude, Willie, I'm so sorry shit went down the way it did. Sorry if it seemed like I bailed on you. Well, you did bail on me, Chris, but it's cool. I get it. I mean, I'm sorry too. Obviously, I wasn't trying to make a scene in your place. I understand if you needed to distance yourself from me. You bet. Well, how is the community service thing going? Are you still doing that? I am, and it's actually gotten to be pretty cool. Really? How so? Well, we've kind of become buddies. The old guy and me, uh, he tells me hilarious stories and we listen to music. Oh, uh, that's what's up, man. Um, it's like you turned a negative situation into a positive. Cool, man. Okay, well, it's getting busy. I gotta get back to work. Good luck with that project. You can pay for that coffee at the counter. Ah, oh, come on, no free coffee? Uh, not anymore. But I'm glad you're back on the scene. Hello, Willie. I'm glad to see you out and about. Hi, Margaret. I don't blame you if you don't want to talk to me. I already just talked to you. I said, hi, Margaret. What's new with you? How is everything at City Paper? Shitty. But I'm still there. Probably thanks to your story. A ton of other people who started when I did were let go. We're all being replaced by best of lists written by bots. It's not a happy place right now. I'm sorry to hear it. Thanks. Hey, Willie. I want to say I'm sorry. I am. That was shitty of me. I shouldn't have done that to you. And it feels awful. I just... I hope I didn't screw up your life too bad. Ha! Oh, man. Wow. No problem at all, Margaret. You know, at first it was pretty rough. I was pretty mad at you, mad at this weird city. My girlfriend wouldn't talk to me. My friends bailed. I had to run home one night because people were chasing me. But I've actually started to enjoy the community service. I've come to really like old Stanley Onion. We've kind of become friends when he remembers who I am. Aww! You two have become friends? After all of that? I guess so. I hope he's my friend. His stories are amazing. He's really inspiring me. I feel like I want to do something with this experience. Maybe tell his story in some way. I don't know yet. Ooh, like some kind of creative reaction to this experience? Or some kind of documentary thing? Like a hyper-local biopic video piece? Maybe. I mean, I don't... Ooh. I don't know. How about if this is like your lesson learned comeback piece? First, you fall from grace. Then, you work with the person you hurt. Learn to like each other. Then you tell his story. Mm, I mean, this is writing itself, Willie. I would write a piece like that. People would eat it up. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Thanks, Margaret. If it turns into anything, I'll let you know. I'm actually headed up to St. Ursula's today to hang out with him. Oh, hey, my pocket's buzzing. I gotta take this. Okay, great. I'm so glad we saw each other today. You know how to reach me. Have fun with Stanley. Hello, Vic. Willie James, my man. I got your message. How you doing, babe? You still roughing up old people in Cleveland? <laughs> uh, no, man. Uh, I'm in Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, I knew it was one of those sausage and football places that gets winter. You like it there? I mean, I hear it's real up and coming, but snow? Screw that. So what's up, buddy boy? I'm working on something I think could be pretty good. Oh, yeah? Something good? What you got for me, bubs? So the old guy I knocked down, we've kind of bonded, I think. He's been telling me his amazing stories. Amazing stories? Well, baby, how amazing. He's one of the oldest living people in the world. He's... he's an onion man. He's, like, made from onion with an onion head. And he's freaking hilarious. He's done all this cool stuff. He was a polka dancer. He was in wars. Uh, so you're saying it's a pitch about an onion-headed senior citizen veteran who used to dance polka and what? I mean, I trust you read on these things as the artist, Bubba, but this sounds a little, you know, you gotta fill it in for me because I don't, uh, I can't see it yet, boo-boo. Uh, well, yeah, of course you can't. I I'm still fleshing it out, but, uh, it's a comeback story. My comeback story. I've already got press lined up in a venue here. It'll be my creative reaction to this experience. Uh, like an indie doc-style peek at urban Americana. Ethnic, 
subculture. What about a hyperlocal biopic video piece? Ew, ew, I like the sound of that now. Okay, a hyperlocal biopic video piece about an onion man. Okay, I'm interested. Uh, let me know when you have more. It's a little short right now, though, boy chick. We may have to fill it in, spice it up. Is there a little more to the story, I hope? Yes, definitely more to the story. I think I'm onto something pretty fantastic, actually. Well, you got that magic touch, brother. I know it. You get your hands on something good there, I suggest you work on an exclusivity agreement with your old friend for rights to that story. I'll write one up for you and zing it over. Hey, I got a thing here I gotta do. Uh, you stay warm in Cleveland, or a uh, Pittsburgh there, and hit me up when you have something else, brah. You got it, Vic. I'm looking forward to the next day. Vic? friend. Willie, I hope seeing you in them rabbit ears changes his attitude. He's getting on my last nerve today. I swear to God, I'm about to boom, boom his ass. Oh, well, I'll try to be a good distraction in that case. Uh, he, he and I have a lot to catch up on. Good luck. He's in a mood today. I ain't trying to wake him up, but... Hey, Stanley. Hi, Stanley. Are you with us today? Uh. Hello, Mr. Onion. <coughs> yeah. What? Oh, just making sure you're with us. Look, your boy Willie James is here. Who? Hi, Stanley. Sorry to wake you up. I was dreaming. About what? Gigantic tits. Okay, boys. I will leave you two with them. Knock yourselves out. Stanley, I brought you this soup and a cool new blanket. Well, wow, that's real nice. I like soup and I like blankets. Uh, who, who are you? I'm Willie. Oh, well, I don't, I don't know who the hell you are. Well, we're friends. Oh. Okay, friendly Willie. So what, uh, what do you want to do? What do I want to do? <laughs> I don't know. We usually just hang out and stare into space. I work on my computer and you stare into space. But since you started talking again, you've been telling me stories about your life, Stanley. Is that so? Anything good? <laughs> yeah, all of it. In fact, I'd love to hear about your polka dancing career or about the dragon thing you mentioned or if you had any family or whatever, really. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm tired and... What are you doing here, anyway? Uh, I got into trouble because I accidentally knocked you down. I'm here doing court-ordered community service. You knocked me down? You punk, I'll knock you. you. Why do why, 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 why you have bunny rabbit ears on your head? Oh, I'm just trying to be cute. <laughs> That's a swing and a miss, kid. Yeah, I'm not surprised to hear you say that. Hey, I wanted to thank you for introducing me to new music that I've been enjoying. I bought the Connie Francis song you were talking about. Oh, hell, Carl, I love Connie Francis. You, you should have brought the record with you. We could have played well, it. Well, look, I can, I can just play it from my phone. Check it out. What? Hey. <laughs> oh, oh, this reminds me of my wife. Your wife? You, you had a wife? Yeah, I had a wife. I had a great wife, Sonia. Tell me about Sonia, please. How did you two meet? How did we meet? Well, she she lived up the hill a bit, and uh, 
we were, we were the only two left single after everybody else got each, so we spared two other people, you know. She, she wasn't, uh, what she would say is, a traditional beauty. Me, well, I'm an onion, so. I was prepared to be alone. Nobody called me on the phone. Look at me. I am nothing but an onion. Not even a nice one. I completely understand why no one would take my hand. Sonia, Sonia fell in love with an onion. Yes, Sonia, Sonia fell in love with an onion. She had great big feet and big buck teeth and hair that would not curl. The ugliest girl in Polish, she was my prettiest girl in the world. She made a foreign brawny, but she lacked in beauty. She could pick you up and roll you around and break your right tootie. Sonia, Sonia fell in love with an onion. Yes, Sonia, Sonia fell in love with an onion. No one would give her romance, yet they all loved her so. For the things she said, the things she did, what she seemed to know. She could drink as much as any man with a devil for a laugh. When you share a meal, she wasn't shy, she'd eat more than her half. Sonia, Sonia fell in love with an onion. Yes, Sonia, Sonia fell in love with an onion. I didn't only love her for the last like a runaway train. Her mind was something special. Oh, she had a great big brain. She spoke several languages, did our books and taxes, knew how to make great sandwiches, and knew all the science faxes. Sonia, Sonia fell in love with an onion. My Sonia, Sonia fell in love with an onion. She built our house and home. She stitched my shirt and pants That woman could do anything But boy, could she polka dance been so simple just to fall in love with a feather on the ocean or a bee in the sun it would have been expected just to fall in love with the wind on her dress or a button undone it have been less painful just to fall in love with the silly notion of forever young but as with all things i've ever known there came a day when sonia left me alone i prefer to have lost her love rather than to have had none i shouldn't be so lucky sonia Fell in love with an onion. Oh, my God. Oh my God, did you just make that up? That was, man, that was amazing. I mean, what a beautiful story. It's a love story. When did you know she was your soulmate? 
soulmate. I don't, I don't know. She, she was in charge of all that sort of thing. I, I could tell you though, I knew at first sight that I wanted nothing to do with her. But she was so damn strong. She grabbed me, she swung me around. And I, I didn't have much saying it all together. Yep. So we, so I married her. <laughs> Come on, that's incredible. Uh, was she part of your polka dancing? Uh, not just part. The whole polka thing was her idea. I mean, she showed me the steps, and took me to the dances, and we got pretty good at it. Uh, she made us those costumes. <laughs> oh, God. We went all over the place, dancing in contest and winning quite a few. Oh, you two hit the polka big time, huh? Sure. We went all the way to Chicago once and won first place. And some fella called us sideshow freaks in uh, the polka circuit. Oh, man, that's not cool. He was just jealous. Yeah, but he was sort of right, too. We had a niche. And that's what I tried to tell Sonia, at least. But she was too busy clobbering the guy. We had to hot foot it out of Chicago. We left the trophy there. Sounds like fun. So, did you two have any kids? No. No, we, we maybe would have, but she got sick so we couldn't have no kids but thank god for that i suppose because i i i couldn't have raised no kid by myself after she died oh jeez i'm sorry how did she die <clears throat> goddamn cancer goddamn cancer all right what good will that do oh. sonia what good will it to curse and swear about it Stanley, come here. Come here. You smell like booze, Stoosh. Oh, well, I was, I was drinking. You're mad at me. Mad at you? No, 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 no. You are. I can tell you're mad. It's okay. Grief looks different on everyone. I, how the hell could you think I'm mad at you? For Christ's sakes. Yeah, I, just, I just found out I'm losing you. And you're terrified. You're terrified, thinking that you won't have me here to argue with you. So you started an argument with me? Well, you still have the chance? No, I didn't. How did I start an argument with you? See, you're too drunk to remember starting the argument. Ah, oh, give me a break. Be mad. Be mad at the situation. Be mad at the shit luck. Don't be mad at me. I'm not mad, goddammit. God I know. Don't do this to yourself. Don't be mad when I go. Because it'll eat you. It'll make you miserable. I need you to live. I need you to keep dancing. D dancing? Dancing? Who, who am I going to dance with? Someone. Whoever you want. Promise me you won't just bury yourself in grief and stop living. Promise me you'll try to be happy again. I'm not. Uh, I don't know why you're stirring things up like this now. I mean, I, listen. Listen, I'm going to step out. Step out to where? Why? To avoid this argument? Exactly. Yeah, I just can't do this right now. We can we can talk when I come home. Hey, Stanley, husband. Don't come home drunk today. I know it's not fair. But I'm still alive. You're still alive. So let's live. While we still have little time. Life doesn't have to stink. Stanley. Mr. Onion. Are you there? But when I came home, she was dead. It was too late. And that same day, I knew the end was near, but not, not that same day. Oh, Stanley, I'm so sorry, man. It's okay. Well, did you honor her wishes? I mean, did you remarry? Did you find happiness? Did you keep dancing? Nope. 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 No, I didn't. So, what happened to you? What did you do once she was gone? What did I do once she was gone? Now, that, that's a question. And that's, uh, well, what I did, I drank beer. I drank vodka. I drank whiskey. I got good and drunk. And I went out in the backyard and I dug up the earth. And my hands, I dug up enough earth to make a shallow grave for myself. Then I crawled right into it, and I laid down to die. And the soil accepted me, and I just sank right into it. Jesus, Stanley, what? how long did you lay there in that hole? 
Not long. See, my, my body returned to the earth. And I remember my flesh decaying into the dirt. My veins and arteries becoming roots. My mind going still as my body and spirit disintegrated into the ground. I held on to one thought, the pain of losing Sonia, the essential pain of it as I was trying to bury it, it was growing, a new bulb blooming into something I've held inside for so long, but I couldn't hold it any longer, and it was the day. What day? Uh, was the day, March 11th, March 11th, 1964. What was it? What were you holding inside? It's the dragon. It's the dragon of Polish Hill. It was in there the, the whole time, since I was a boy. What do you mean? Tell me about the dragon of Polish Hill. Uh, it was me. It was me. I, 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 I did all those things. I was. The dragon was me. Oh, what things? What do you mean, Stanley? What was the dragon of Polish Hill? What, ha what happened that day? The sky turned green and filled with swirling gray clouds. The rivers raged, barges toppled bridges, trees and tombstones dipped over, and I burst from the ground, no longer an onion, but as the dragon from my imagination. It was the smoke Polsky Gory, and I could see the city below me as I swooped and swirled across the skies through the hills and valleys. It was an outpouring of my deepest grief. It turned into a dragon, ripped right out of the ground and thrown up into the sky. What are you saying? I don't know what you mean. The neighbors found me wandering around in my backyard a day or so later. Naked as a jaybird, my onion self. They all just figured I was an honor drunk, a madman in grief. And I was. And that's when they put me in the convalescent home. Okie dokie, buddy boys. That is it for today. Willie James, you continue to surprise me with how good you are with Mr. Onion. Actually, can we have a little more time? He was just telling me something. Actually, no. He looks tired and stressed. Y'all been talking about titties too much. But he might not remember what we were talking about tomorrow. Yeah, he don't remember nothing. I've noticed that too. Okay, you're getting on my last nerve. Get on out of here with them rabbit ears and come back tomorrow. Get. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, see you tomorrow, Stanley. Huh? Who's that? Holy crap. It's for real. Such a beautiful story. Oh, Vic is gonna love this. I really needed this. Hey, Stanley. I forgot something that I wanted to ask you one last thing before I go. Oh, oh yeah. What's that? Well, you know how... Wait. Do you remember me? You're the only chucklehead I know walking around in rabbit ears. Ask me again in ten minutes, though. I may not know. What do you want? I'm about to take a nap. Well, you know how I told you that I'm an artist? Ah, oh, for Christ's sakes. How much do you need? What? No, oh, no, no. I'm not asking for money. I just want permission to tell your story in my work. What do you mean? I mean, I want to use your story in my artwork, sort of like a documentary about your life. And I want to get your permission, your consent. Yeah, sure, I don't give a rat's ass about any of that. Well, well thanks, Stanley. If you don't mind, uh, I need your legal consent as well. If you could just sign this. You gotta sign something so you can tell a story about me. It's just a formality so I can get started. I mean, I'll have the rights to your story. Of course, you'll be compensated for the use of your likeness if anything comes from this. But, you know, who can ever say if things like this... Would you shut up so I can take a nap? Here, give that to me. It's signed. There you go. 
go make your art show. I don't care. Oh, wow. Jeez, thank you, Stanley. I mean it. Thanks. I'm sorry I interrupted your nap. I'm just gonna... Goodbye, Stanley. Oh, it's awful! And it's bad! And it's just terrible! Oh my gracious! Oh, hi, Francine. How are you? Everything okay? Oh, I'm just... I don't know. I just don't know. I'm just... I'm just beside myself! I understand. It has to be hard. What do you mean? Well, why are you so upset? Raymond! He's... He's... I just be standing there talking to him, and then the next moment I remember... I'm just an old lady! <laughs> yes, Jesus! Raymond died years ago. I think I'm starting to lose my memory sometimes, and sometimes I remember thinking that same thought before. I'm so sorry, Francine. At least it sounds like you have good memories of Raymond. He must have been a heck of a guy. Ha! Raymond! Raymond was a son of a bitch! But I guess it's nice that sometimes I forget about that. I forget so much! But you know what I do remember? At least once. Once every day. What's that? I remember that Raymond betrayed me. And it all just comes pouring back to me. That same old pain, all that emotion, that bastard. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I... Well, it was nice to see you, Henry. I better get back up the hill and get supper started before Raymond gets home from work. Goodbye, sweetie. Goodbye, Francine. What's happening in Pittsburgh? Money bags. <laughs> I looked at what you sent me. I ran it around the team, and we all agree you're onto something potentially really good. Tell me you got that exclusivity agreement signed, Ombies. I did. I'm holding it right now. Oh, my dude. Willie, I have not forgotten about you. Hey, who never forgot about you, huh? Old Vic. That's who. I've been thinking about your story and the possibility of running a feature on it. I've been thinking about this concept, and I'm excited about the possibilities it presents. I assume this has to happen pretty quickly. I mean, given Stanley's age, and honestly, I think the time is right for a story like this. I assume you're trying to make this happen fast. I feel like this could be a timely thing, you know? Like, nobody's doing anything like this right now, and... I mean, how much time do we have left with the guy, in all honesty? Have you given any more thought to format? Are you still thinking hyper-local biopic type thing, or...? So what's your angle on this one, kid? I like the sound of that old hyper-local biopic, but I don't want to corner you on that. You creatives need space. I get that. I get it. And we can option this a number of ways, you know? Maybe it's a Netflix binge series. Could go a number of ways, but I'm thinking you want to go with your best offer on this. Payout-wise. You've paid your dues with all of the artsy stuff. 
Well, listen, I think you've paid your dues, and I think you have options. Hey, I have a thing I have to take care of, so I have to bounce. But I'll talk to you soon. Seriously, let's make this happen. Okay, my man, good work. You're on your way back. I got a thing to do. Send me that agreement. Just sing it over. Let's make something and sell it. Ciao. Money bags. Tch. These people, man. This whole thing, what a joke. I got your hyper-local biopic right here. Shove it. Or zing it. Whatever. I'm not doing this. These people suck. May the bridges I burn light my way. I can't wait to hang out with Stanley tomorrow morning and tell him about this. I can't wait to hear what he has to say. <laughs> what am I doing? What is the deal? I'm getting the feeling that nothing is real. What is your angle? What is a friend? What if it's up to me how the story will end? Are we making a movie? Is all of this fake? Or am I really living in a pit full of snakes? It's hard to be sure which way this will go. I've been a fool, but there's one thing I know. I'm gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing, gonna do the right thing. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Nurse Jackson. Willie, my friend. I'm so happy to see you this morning. You're right on time, as always. I'm happy to see you, too. I'm having such a great time with Stanley. He's so funny. Oh, Willie. He called someone an ignoramus the other day. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Oh, well, hey, I bought him this little breakfast sandwich. Is that cool? Well, see, that is so sweet of you, but he won't be able to eat that. Oh, um, man, yeah, I guess old people can't eat breakfast sandwiches. No, Willie. Mr. Onion passed away in his sleep last night. I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm so sorry you lost your friend, Willie. Can I give you a hug? Hello. Thank you all for being here today. I'm Willie. Willie James. A lot of you might know me from uh, when you canceled me. So, well, I'm a friend of Stanley's. I'm pretty sure I was his friend. He was my friend for sure. We had a lot of great laughs together, even though our relationship started on a pretty bad note. You know, mistakes were made, but it changed. I, I think he liked me, but it's like when, I don't know, we, well, I don't know. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure how I ended up being the one to do this. The thing that made us friends were his stories and music. We both love music, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm terrible at doing this eulogy. I'm sorry. I think instead I'd like to play this song for you that we wrote together. Here it goes.
This old town has changed so much Don't look the same to me But I'm an old fool and I don't know what I expected it should be My old friend Doug could cut a rug But Doug don't live here no more I went and knocked at Ruthie's place A strange face is what I saw I locked T-Dot around the town and tapped on every door. They all said, go home, old man, nobody pokers here no more. I said, to hell with you, cause I still do. And then I hiked up my pants. I'll show you kids how good it used to be when we all poke a Poker's here no more, poker's here no more. Poker's here, but nobody poker's here no more. Nobody poker's here no more. Nobody poker's here no more. Poker's here, poker's here, no poker's here no more. Poker's here no more. All right, Stanley. Poker's here no more. Yeah, you got it. Hey, the horns. There's a kid in the horns. Poker's here no more. All right, so I don't know where that kid is. All right, so this next part's like double time, huh? Got it. Let's do the new fangle, the new style. Nobody focus here no more, nobody focus here no more. Nobody focus here no more, nobody focus here no more. Nobody focus here no more, nobody focus here no more. Nobody focus here no more, nobody focus here no more. I lot of dot around the town and tapped on every door. They all said go homo, man, nobody focus here no more. I said hell with you, cause hell with you doing I hiked up my pants. I show your kids how good it was when we all poke a dance. Hey, that's right. All right, take your pants up. E i e i e i o. E i e i e i o. E i e i e i o. E i e i o. Hey, poker, poker, poker. Here no more. Nobody focus 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 here no more.